Okay, uh, let's get started. Um, so Intel DC persistent memory was launched early part of this year. So before I start the talk, I wanted to see how many of you already have access to servers because there are a lot of ODMs that are already shipping servers with Intel Optane DC persistent memory. So I wanted to see a show of hands if you, how many of you actually have access to servers that have uh, Intel Optane DC persistent memory populated. Very cool, thank you. Um, so how many of you already started playing with provisioning utilities, if I may ask? Nice, cool, thanks. Um, so I'm Usha Upadhyayla. I am from Intel Data Center Group. And um, let's get started. So as a agenda for today, uh, I know most of you probably are aware of different operating modes that Intel Optane DC persistent memory supports, memory mode and app direct, but I, as a quick refresher, I have a slide to just to go over that. And then we need to really understand some basic provisioning concepts. So before we start using tools that help provisioning or configuring Intel Optane DC persistent memory, you need to understand certain concepts. So I'll go over that. And then you basically need to understand if your platform, that means BIOS and the operating system, support persistent memory. So I'll quickly go over that. Um, then introduce you to certain provisioning utilities. You know, there are multiple of those. Some are uh, the DIM specific utilities. Some are DIM neutral utilities, meaning they uh, work for not only Intel Optane DC persistent memory, but also other NVIDIAs in the market. So I'll give you a list of those utilities. And then um, I'll show you some of the commands that I use and the tools that I use to provision in memory mode and app direct. And then I'll walk you through some of the examples. If you have any questions during the talk, please feel free to ask. And Terry will be the one um, translating it to me, or uh, he'll help me with uh, kind of going around. So again, you know, just one slide on the operating modes. So Intel Optane DC persistent memory supports two modes. One is called memory mode, and the other one is called operate, uh, app direct. In memory mode, the capacity of persistent memory is presented to the operating system and the application as volatile memory. So though it is persistent in nature, the way we configure the devices, when you configure it and come back up, basically reboot, the operating system sees the capacity as volatile memory, which means that you put something in the memory, you reboot, the, the data is not there. So it's gone. It's just like DRAM. But it offers very large capacity, unlike DRAM today. In app direct mode, Application, so in memory mode, the other thing that happens is the DRAM capacity that's on the platform is totally hidden from the operating systems. Let's say an example. We have, let's say, 384 gigabytes of DRAM in the system. And then, say, 1.5 terabytes of Optane DC persistent memory in the system. When you configure in memory mode and you reboot and come back up, you only see 1.5 terabytes of volatile memory. So DRAM is totally hidden from the operating systems and the application. I'll talk about that a little more as we go through the provision. But in app direct mode, again, using the utilities, you, can, you have a way to configure them in different modes. When you configure in app direct mode, application sees persistent memory as well as DRAM. So now applications can put data in not only in DRAM, but also in persistent memory, unlike memory mode where you don't have access to DRAM. So just a quick thing, uh, I just wanted to go over that. So with respect to concepts for provisioning, so now you have with Intel Optane DC persistent memory, you can go up to six terabytes on a two socket system. That means there's so much of capacity that need to be you know, provisioned in different ways or configured in different modes. 
So you have the raw capacity that's available when the servers come to you, right? I mean, they may not have been provisioned in any particular mode. They may not have been in memory mode or app direct mode. So the capacity, the raw capacity, first need to be formatted into something called regions. So a region is something, nothing but a contiguous range of physical addresses. So a region can be created on a per dim basis, or a region can be divided, uh, created across multiple dims. So if you take a look at this one, it's called a non-interleaved region. That means a region is created on a per dim basis. Whereas this one is called non-interleaved region because we are using across multiple dims to create that contiguous address space. The advantage of interleaved is when you do a read or a write, it goes across the dims, and so you have a better throughput for reads and writes. But if you have this one, it's basically less throughput than compared to the interleaved regions. The advantage of non-interleaved region is, let's say one of the dims for some reason doesn't work then you don't have access to any of any part of that entire region. So the, the advantage of this is that you know if a DIM fails, then you only lose access to the data on this particular DIM. But if a DIM fails, then you have ac don't have access to anything here. So again, you have to kind of weigh against, you know, you want better throughput, and then have some sort of a RAID or something on top of it so you don't lose the data. But that's the concept. So basically, regions is where we kind of bootstrap raw capacity into uh, uh, contiguous address space. But after creating regions, it's still not exposed to the applications. So we need to format it into something called namespaces, just like SSDs, NVMe SSDs. So you create namespaces on top of, uh, you know, as you, as you format your SSDs. So you create namespace on top of region. So just, just remember these terms. The regions and namespaces are a very important part of provisioning. So at a very high level, what are the steps for configuring your DIMMs in different modes? In memory mode, there's not a lot of steps. You basically use a utility that I'm going to show. And then you create, you tell the utility, here is the amount of capacity I want to configure in memory mode. You can say 100% of my 6 terabyte I want as memory, volatile memory, or you can say I want like 50% of it. So there's a way to do that. So there are no regions or no namespaces in memory mode. In app direct mode, you basically have to create regions. Again, that happens at the hardware level. Then you create namespaces. Basically, that uh, is exposed to the kernel, and that creates a logical device. And then you create, you know, take and mount file systems. That happens in the user space. So this is at a very high level, but I'm, I'll show you the tools that are used to do these steps. So there are different kinds of provisioning utilities. One is DIM specific, meaning. Intel created a tool that understands Optane memory much more than anybody outside. So we created something called um, IPMCTL. This is specific to Intel Optane Data Center memory. But operating system vendors created tools as well that are that work for DIMMs, not only Optane display system memory, but also other DIMMs in the market. So these are the tools that you need to be aware of. IPM CTL for certain certain um, provisioning uh, part of part of the provisioning and ND CTL and PowerShell commandlets for persistent memory. Is there anyone here that actually uses Windows and not Linux? Okay, cool. I have because majority of my uh, and he's laughing. Um, majority of of my content is for Linux. Okay, so again, this is something that I put together to show. Uh, what is the difference between these tools? Uh, so IPM CTL, it works both in Linux and Windows, and it's it is the only tool that can create regions. NDCTL does not create regions. 
PowerShell commands don't create regions. It's only that IPMCTL. But again, IPMCTL, uh, we, we don't recommend uh, using IPMCTL for creating namespaces. Use NDCTL and PowerShell commands. There are also health and smart commands and several others. So the man pages, there's a lot of documentation out there for these tools. Again, you know, here are a, a basic summary of all the two uh, commands that are available. Um, there is a provisioning, uh, basically how do you create, how do you show, how do you dump, and there's device discovery and several other um, uh, commands that are available for IPMCTL. And then NDCTL, also there is a create namespace, disable, and there's some security stuff. Again, same thing with Microsoft PowerShell commands. So, so the first thing right now, you know, I talked about, you know, here are the modes, here are the utilities, here are the commands, but you have a server in front of you, you don't know where to start. What's the first thing you need to do when you have a server with obtained DC persistent memory, you need to verify if your BIOS supports persistent memory. You need to also verify if your operating system kernel supports the mem persistent memory. So the way you do that is there is a command called NDCTL list, and in your BIOS, again your BIOS vendor uh, that is on the on the platform uh, needs to provide something called um, NFIT table, which is non-volatile firmware interface table that understands you know and uh, identifies that the devices are on the platform are persistent memory. And then um, the, the, the kernel, you know, we've had support for persistent memory in the kernel starting 4.0. Uh, you know, there's been bug fixes, it's getting more stabler by the day, uh, but the support has been for persistent memory since 4.0. But you may be having a custom kernel Right? I mean, you may have a custom kernel that you didn't even care for persistent memory so far. Though you are on a 4.18 kernel, you may not have enabled those kernel parameters, right? So I've, I've talked to several customers who are who you know bring the kernel version they want. They only configure to the extent that they need in their systems, in their infrastructure, and they may not have even enabled persistent memory. So this is something, these are the kernel config parameters that you need to enable to make sure the persistent memory is uh, recognized in the system. Uh, so that's a command that you can use on your um, Linux box. Um, again, you can also look at dmessage uh, to see if um, persistent memory devices are uh, identified and you know, kind of uh, seen uh, as, the, as part of the diva as, as it's booting up. So the type 7 shows that uh, the device is persistent. So these are some basic things, again, to verify um, if you have support. So now you've verified that your BIOS supports persistent memory, your kernel supports persistent memory. Now what's the next thing you need to do? You restarted the system. You know that the, there is a, something called IPMCTL, uh, but you don't know what to do. What's the first command that you need to check? Um, so the first thing, so let's say you look at a system with uh, two sockets and all the six channels, so each socket has uh, you know, six channels and each channel has two slots, so they are um, occupied by or populated by 256 gig DIMMs um, and the DRAM is 32 gig um, on each slot, which basically gets up to 384 gig of DRAM and around 3 terabytes of RAM. So this is the box you have in front of you. So what do you, how do you, how do you, what do you, what's the first thing you need to do? So there's a command called IPMCTL show dim. So IPMCTL not only works from the command line in operating system, but also it has a same interface and the commands from UEFI level. So you can even run these commands at the UEFI level. So when you run show dim, it basically shows all the obtained persistent memory DIMMs that are in the system and their health status and their firmware version and all that stuff. But if you run show topology, it not only shows the obtained persistent memory, but also shows the DRAM that is in the system. So it basically shows, and, and again, where the device is located on what channel, what slot, and all that stuff. You can also run something called show memory resources that shows what's the capacity on it, is it configured in memory mode or app direct and things like that. So these are some basic commands to get you started. 
And then you can use NDCTL commands as well. Again, this is only operating system utility, so this doesn't work from UEFI. Um, so you can run NDCTL list, and you know it basically shows the DIM information and you know lots of other information there. So now that we have covered you know the basic concepts about the modes and the utilities and where they work, you know what are the things you need to check for when you first open up your box, let's get started on how to provision for each of these modes. So again, IPC, IPMCTL is our friend, right? You, for provisioning the region. So first thing you need to do is create regions. If not, there is, NDCTL doesn't know how to create regions. It doesn't have that much of information about the DIMS to create those regions. So IPMCTL, get here you just create the memory and then um, you reboot. So what, what this command is really doing here is that I'm telling the IPMCTL, my goal is to create 100% of the capacity in memory mode. So what this is showing is that, please take the entire capacity and make it in, look like volatile memory. So three terabytes of uh, memory, persistent memory, needs to show up as my volatile memory. So once I give this command, the tool, what it does is it shows all this information and it says, hey, this is the configuration I'm going to set. Are you okay with it? Basically saying that all these DIMMs, so because all my DIMMs are of this size and all of this capacity now will be configured in memory mode, are you okay? And we say yes, the tool will then commit the configuration. So at this point, it has not done anything. It's basically showing this is what are you okay with it? Once we say yes, basically commits, meaning it's right, it writes some metadata on each DIM. And so when you reboot up, back up, it basically shows the entire capacity to be in volatile, uh, as volatile memory. Any questions? So once you configure in memory mode using IPMCTL, you can even use your favorite Linux memory tools to look at what's the volatile capacity that the operating system is seeing. So now you can run LSMEM and it shows three terabytes, you know, there are several different tools that you can use. But you can also run IPMCTL show memory resources, and now the memory capacity is shown as three terabytes. And the app direct is shown as zero bytes. So this is something simple to kind of validate if the IPMCTL has done the right thing or not. So IPMCTL can be used to configure the capacity not only in memory mode and app direct, but there's something called mixed mode. What does that mean? You can, you can use IPMCTL to configure part of the capacity to be in memory mode at the same time, the rest of the rest of the capacity to be in app direct. So on the same platform, you can have something set up as mixed mode, which is part of it is like 1.5 terabyte of I want, I don't want like all three terabytes of DRAM or uh, volatile memory. I want only 1.5 terabytes of volatile memory, but I want the rest to be configured in persistent memory. So that's called the mixed mode. But the one thing to note, so here you see that once I have created memory mode as 50, let's say I want the 50% of it configured as memory mode, you see that half of it is now under memory and half of it is under app direct. So one important point to note when in mixed mode, anytime you configure any part of the capacity as memory mode, DRAM capacity is now totally uh, not seen by the operating system. So now, the app direct sees the volatile memory as 1.5 terabytes, not 84 of DRAM. But if you configure the entire capacity as app direct, you'll see it as 384 DRAM, and the rest as the entire capacity of persistent memory as app direct. So the one thing, important thing to remember in mixed mode is that any part of the capacity you configure in memory mode, DRAM is totally not seen. So now, 
next section is going to be on abstract. This is a bit more, um, uh, you know, complicated than memory mode because memory mode is just tell the tool, you know, what is the capacity that you want to configure, and it's, it does it for you. So as I talked about, the interleaved and non-interleaved, right? Interleaved is something that you can create a region across the DIMS, and again, only on one socket, per socket. So there is a IPM CTL, so again, sure we remember, eight regions. Uh, uh, you create namespaces on top of it, and then you actually have uh, make the file system and mount it on that device. So in an interleaved set, let's say we have the six DIMMs that we had on our server. Um, we want to create a single region across all the, um, uh, the persistent memory DIMMs. So you create something called IPMCTL create with the goal of persistent memory type is abdirect. And the default is interleaved. So if you give an option of, uh, you, don't, you don't want to do really um, uh, interleaved, you basically say uh, an option of non, I, I want to do it with a non-interleaved option. So there is a command line option on the IPMCTL to say, I want to create the region as an interleaved set or a non-interleaved set. Again, just what uh, it's done, it can only be, regions can be created only per socket base and not across. So here I show IPMCTL with the goal of persistent memory type is AppDirect. And then it's showing everything on the AppDirect here. And I say yes, that's the configuration, I, I confirm and then you reboot, and what you see is two regions created. One region per socket. So 1.5 terabyte per socket, because we have 1.5 terabyte per socket physical DIMS. So now we created regions, but applications still don't see them. So we need to now create namespaces. So with respect to namespaces, um, I don't know how many of you attended Andy's session, but you must have learned about DAX, direct access mode, and uh, where you basically um, bypass the page cache. You're not, your, uh, your reads and writes are not going through page cache, so that's called the DAX mode. And to basically do that, um, you create a namespace mode with FS DAX mode. So the mode, there are different modes that you can create your namespaces. So you now you have you know, raw capacity formatted as regions. Now you have to put a certain type of namespace on top of it. And here are different namespace modes that you can create. So this one removes page cache. But there is something called sector mode. Again, this one is again, you know, as Andy talks about, the persistent memory programming model, you know, you have direct access to persistent memory region, or you have legacy applications where you're not going to change anything, but you're going through the NVIDIA driver, and it's still block access. So in that uh, uh, situation, you want to create a sector mode, or, you know, block-based namespace. So the FS tax is direct mapping, Sector mode is something that is block based. So um, when you create namespaces, basically what the kernel does is it creates a logical device. So the logical devices, if you create an FS DAX mode, it starts as slash dev slash bmm0. And then if it is a sector mode, device, mode namespace, it shows up as slash dev slash pmm0 with the S. That means it's a sector mode device. Um, I'm not really going to talk about dev DAX and raw. It's more for very advanced uh, usages. Uh, and there's a lot of, uh, and also there is a lot of um, documentation here. So I just want to now um, show you know, as a, from a picture, 
how the regions are created and the new series and all that stuff. So we have, let's say, two socket system. So we created two different regions and using IPM CTL, either through Linux or UEFI. And then you're creating namespaces on the regions. And then you create a DAX file systems again, you know, Andy talked about the system, uh, file systems that are aware of persistent memory, persistent memory aware file systems, uh, ext4, xfs, and ntfs. And um, you can create more than one namespace on a region. So you can create multiple namespaces on a, on a region. And you can create, again, here, um, different file systems you can partition on top of the, uh, the devices and, and things like that. So what I want to show here is IPM CTL for regions, NDCTL for creating and managing namespaces, then, you cre then the operating system basically creates these devices, and then you put the file system on top of it and mount it. So if you take a look at, again, these are a lot of examples I have. Um, so here we are creating two namespaces, FSDAX. And here you create the file system, and then you mount it with the DAX option. So you create the, 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 the device is created, and you create the namespace. So you're saying, I want a region, use region 0 and mode FSDAX and create my namespace. Once that is created, a persistent memory device is created. So we're saying, on region 0, create a namespace of type FSDAX. And so the kernel created this device. And then you, you know that a EXT4 supports persistent memory. So you're creating, you're making the file system and you're, you're mounting the file system with the DAX option on this device, device PM0, and that's the uh, mount point. So now, when you have applications on top of this file system, it's creating memory mapped file, and it's, uh, when it memory maps it, it basically has direct access to the persistent memory region. So this is the thing that you need to do to have direct access to persistent memory region. So this is showing um, how to create a, a sector mode uh, namespaces. So again, regions, the same thing. There's no change. Uh, even when you're creating a different namespace, it's the same uh, app direct um, region that you're creating. So there's no change in the way you create namespace. Uh, but when it comes to creating namespaces, you're saying, I want to create a sector mode type namespace on region 0 and another one on region 1. So basically, it's creating a persistent memory sector kind of device. On, uh, you know, created these two devices. And so you create, again, your file system, and then you mount it. Here, you notice that I have not given DAX option because DAX option is for direct access not for block so when you create a sector mode device it's basically working you're basically using your legacy applications you're not really changing your applications so currently you have your storage API that you're using and then you are basically you know, 4k or 512 whatever is the sector size that you have but the one that I showed with FSDAX before, your application basically need to be written to do direct access. So it's not doing in blocks. And it's basically bypassing the page cache totally, so you have direct access. But in this mode, you, you're basically, um, there is no direct access. There's a driver in between, there's a file system in between that is not even aware of persistent memory. The legacy file system and the legacy application, but you're going through NVDIM driver. And so the NVDIM driver basically knows how to talk in cache line to the, NV, to the persistent memory. So this is. 
or legacy applications. So what I want to show here is um, you how you basically um, create multiple namespaces on one region, a single namespace on the other region, but then um, you can you know kind of create different file systems on different. Um, so you can you can. It's kind of so flexible that you create, you can create different kind of configurations using these uh, provisioning utilities. You don't have to have the entire capacity available as one mode or one namespace or, or single file system. So here, I'm showing that I'm using two different kinds of file systems. So if your application wants to, you know, kind of test with two different kinds of file systems, you can create two different kinds of, make two different kinds of file systems and then um, you can mount it on the mount point here. But again, this is again uh, direct access, so we're using mount DAX. And, and you know, here we use the parameter size. So we're saying, I want to create a namespace of size 50 gig. I don't want too much, you know, my application doesn't really need a lot of capacity. Um, so then you can create something with a different size. So the size parameter is what I'm showing here. So again, here I'm showing how you can create both sector and file system DAX uh, namespaces on the same region. So different kinds of examples are uh, is what I'm providing. Um, so again, you can basically take these commands, type it into your command line, and it should work. So these are all tested. We've tested on several different platforms with different capacities. So you can copy paste these, and then you should be able to uh, you know, play with your uh, server. Uh, what I'm also showing here is that you can create different partitions on, on the devices. So you, you have the device created. You can partition your device first on top of it, like you can use fdisk, and you can partition um, on top of the uh, on the device, and then create your file system and mount them as well. So, even yeah, even more flexibility um, to use the existing partitioning tools. So there are no new partitioning tools you need to use. So, we have a lot of resources. Um, we have a almost an hour webinar uh, showing you know, where to start. Actually, it has a command line showing you know, how to run these commands and the output of the commands. Uh, so I would really recommend um, going to the webinar. Uh, we have several quick start guides. Uh, the quick start guides talk about, again, you know, you, how do you, what do you really do when you have server in front of you? So we talk about what are the operating system distributions that carry these uh, tools, like NDCTL and IPMCTL? If I want to really get the latest and greatest IPMCTL, where do I go to get the code? How do I build it? Um, you know, different ways of, you know, what are the distributions and that they carry, what versions of these tools are available in different distributions. So the Quick Start Guide is, um, has all this information, um, and it gives you a step-by-step -step, uh, you know, way to uh, create and delete and you know different ways of using different you know options to use uh, when creating the uh, the uh, present memory namespaces. Uh, we also have um, something called persistent memory developer zone. Uh, so it's an Intel persistent memory developer zone. There we have uh, resources like uh, several tutorials. Uh, not only webinar, but we have a lot of video series. So Andy Rudolph uh, did a five-part um, video series. He talks about basics of uh, persistent memory and also uh, PMDK. So there is a, that's this this particular one is a good source for a lot of different information, and not only for provisioning but also you know, different others um, material on Intel Optin DC persistent memory. So that's all I have. So my so my question is uh, if our metadata is small than 4K, uh, uh, 4K and I always access the metadata 
uh, is, is possible to have uh, one AAP is busy and the other AAP is free. So you, you actually interleave it? Uh, yeah, the, the interleave is uh, interleave the link, which means that it's 4K快, 4K快, and it's going to be different AAP. So I want to ask that link. Oh, okay. Uh, you want to understand that uh, what's the difference uh, is that uh, they can still use you know, the interleave uh, or, or can use the interleave, but uh, they want to understand the, uh, the, the, the block size or the autumn, autumn size when we do the interleave. So from the dim perspective, it's uh, 256 bytes. So you can, you can talk about it in cache line access, but it's actually done at the level of 256 bytes. So the access to the dims is basically happening uh, in that. But when we do the interleave, right. I suppose that we, we do the strip. Right? Yes. So it wants under the strip size. How's the, how's the so that is controlled by the memory controller. We don't have access to that. So the interleave, when you configure it in the interleaved mode, uh, we don't have any control over how the DIMs are basically being read or written. There's no acts, there's no nothing available uh, from a tool perspective or an API perspective that you can change that access pattern or the access uh, to the DIMS. You can understand that we don't have this part. This is the use of the internal control that is directly controlled. So for you, there is no space for you. There is no space for you. Yes, the internal control is just to compare. If you do an interleave, 你把它圈成六六根DIM圈成一个一个这个一个 region 然后你去在上面跑的性能 和你做non-interleave变成六个独立的 然后你用外部的话你再考虑用比如说这个卷的管理把它拼接在一起你去看他们之间的差异你可能会比较出来他们哪个对你更合适更合用也有客户是用non-interleave就单条在用也有人把他们用在一起的 你就是流量被分散,直接分到。对,没错,分到你多个盘上。我想我想问的就有没有可能情况,我用一条例子,但是我专门访问那块很小的数据,导致我一片的复杂特别大,其他片的复杂。不会,不会,我们肯定是分散
This is uh, also easy to understand. For example, you have uh, uh, the non uh, interleaf like um, 就像我们一个高速公路有六个车道 对不对？你的数据就在这个车道上，本来不应该是出现这样的情况。Intel应该是非常高效的，就就我我看网上的资料是说，你如果它是四K四K为对对对，这种情况特别少。但是这种情况确实发生之后会出现一个一个定位，一
which SKU supports you, how much capacity of Apache Pass, you should talk to your Intel contact. They can provide you. Yes, so you're asking for a list of ODMs that have qualified? Yes. Um, so Dell, HPE, Lenovo are some of the things that I know, but I think, uh, I don't know about, I know a lot of, yeah, Inspire. Um, so definitely your Intel contact should be able to give you that list. Yeah, ODMs. So you're asking for the, if the list is available on the Intel website? Um, I don't think we maintain a list of ODMs on Intel website, but um, just check with your ODM partner. And, um, and I think Intel should be able to provide you with a list of ODMs that are already shipping. Should you be able to give you a list? Uh, slides available, um, and then um, I think probably the video is also going to be available. Okay, so Usha, I, uh, I have a question actually. Um, so I just discussed with the ladies. So in case uh, we, we when we're using the um, NDCTL to list the DIM, there there's a lock state, right? It's a man, right? So so in case the uh, uh, w w one of the customer just disable uh, enable it, but forget the password, how's the override? Is that is that possible or or okay? <laughs> um, there are certain commands that uh, you can use. Uh, the passphrase is that what he forgot? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> not not for good. My my customer forget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. So it shows up in the frozen state. Yeah, you cannot use, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's a difficult one. Yeah. So is there any kind of a you know, standard override method? To mm, not that I'm aware of, but I can look into that. <laughs> okay, thank you. That's important to remember. Yeah. Okay. And. Um, then the, uh, 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 the next question is the um, um, when we s set up create the uh, uh, region and then the uh, I need to move to the Linux or even Windows to create the uh, namespace. However, that our IPMI, uh, IPMCTL uh, UEF5 version that can support to create the uh, uh, the, the namespace too. And then the uh, BAUS uh, HI interface that also can create the namespace. So what's the difference? And is there any kinds of a uh, you know fully compatible that that two methods to create the namespace? Any kinds of a uh, you know the, the concern or the question that using the uh, UEFI or BAUS version to create namespace? So uh, Intel recommends using the you know when you are in the operating system yes. to use in the operating system specific ones. Yes. Um, because they keep up with any changes that are happening, you know, that are required, either bug fixes or something. Uh, but what your question is that, can we use UEFI to create namespaces? Um, so from what I understand, I think that is doable. Uh, but, uh, you know, how much are we keeping up updating IPMCTL from the UEFI for creating namespaces is something we need to think about. Thank you. If uh, no more questions, uh, thank you very much for attending the session. Thank you.